What is up, everyone, and welcome back to Umineko, the answer arcs. We have finished the main story of episode 8. Phenomenal. Absolutely loved it. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that it, well, maybe it's because of the tea party and the question mark events, I don't know. But the main story of episode 8 was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> it, it was great. I really enjoyed it. I don't know why it gets the... It gets some hate online, but once again, maybe it has something to do with the tea party and the question mark events that I'm about to see. But uh, regardless, yeah, it was a good time, and I'm very much looking forward to what is essentially like the epilogue of this story. So without further ado, episode 8, Tea Party. Well, let's jump into it. Okay, we're in the library. Lambda? Lambda. Show me lamb. I want to know my little homie's okay. <laughs> I know she said she would. Oh, it's probably uh, Featherine returning to her study, yeah, and then it's gonna return back to Iko Ikuko and her special guest. The majestic witch of theater-going drama and spectating set down her pen, looking at the ceiling and sighed deeply. The desk was covered with a scattered mountain of paper covered with writing. Words were packed onto the pages in a thin, high information density language that only the Great Ones could read. Each letter of this language carried the same amount of information as several books in the human world. These letters filled every inch of this huge pile of paper. Surely she had written out every little detail of some world. She stood up, sat down in her favorite rocking chair, and rocked peacefully for a while. どこふでの置き所というものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあるというものがあ
エリカのおもちゃエリカお箸は持ってきたはい我が名探偵に虫眼鏡古田エリカにお箸ですじゃあいいそのごま塩の中身をザラッと出してお箸でごまと塩にはい我が主私の華麗なるお箸さばきをどうかご覧くださいえー、頑張ってね終わったらちゃんと袋に戻しておくのあんたまたそういうことしていじめてんの遊んでるのよ失礼ねそうそうエリカさっき郵便配達が来てあんた宛ての手紙を置いて手紙事件の予感がします言わないで私が差し出し人を当てます化身印は展開ねドラノールあたりじゃないあんたたちまだ信仰があったのねただ化身印があるだけでベルンカステルにはこの程度の推理が可能ですピピピーダメですわが主バンダイン第9祖探偵が複数あることを禁ずじゃああんたが出てけばいいわけだまたね名探偵エリカえそんな我が主真実の魔女エリカここにあんたらって仲いいのか悪いのかいま<笑>だによくわかんないわ悪いに決まってるでしょ私が愛してるのはあんたそそんな我が主ラムダデルタ卿やはり私とあなたは愛入れないようで何よあんた I had a good grin and grabbed Lambda Delta's left arm, which had been walking around the bed. ここにラムダデルタ教のそしてここは断面です。Edgar grinned and wiggled her fingers menacingly. ちょまさか私のライバルにはこんなことができます。ああ、ああ。Tickled the inside of Lambda Delta's left arm. Ugh. Apparently, she was extremely ticklish there. Yeah, on the inside. Incidentally, the open end of Lambda's arm had cute, fluffy white cotton candy poking out. You know, honestly, I can believe that. <laughs> Alright. Lambda Delta's just filled with cotton candy. You know what? I accept it. Apparently, her body was made out of sweet candy with a bit of spice thrown in. Okay, that's a lot less weird. I'll take it. In terms of Etika, like, tickling it. If she was tickling like raw flesh in there, I'd be like, oh. Put your mind at ease. There's nothing remotely terrifying about this scene. Thanks. Etika ran around screaming, I've defeated Lambda Delta all by myself, just like my master. Lambda Delta growled and hissed at her. Burncastle kept on sewing, an exasperated look on her face. It was a very peaceful scene. Yeah, peaceful, that's how I'd describe it. <laughs> ガートルードさんは異端審問官に昇進しそりゃあおめでとうございますパチパチへえ最近猫に続いてワニャンを飼い始めたとかあミャウウォフあミャウウォフへえベルン知らないの最近ブームじゃない最近私もメスのワニャンを飼い出したのコンペイトも美味しく作れて最高よよくわかんないけど今度からあんたの手作り菓子を食べるのは<笑>コーネリアさんは新門館選考に格闘技団員が有利として全然想像がつきませんね格闘技ったっていろいろあるわよ何始めたのキックボクシングに中国憲法だとか、right. <笑>エヴァの影響ですかね<笑>片足で立って戦いそうなイメージないそうよね誰かさんが片足立ちをずいぶん鍛えたもんねウィルさんの近況も書いてえー、意外ウィルさん FX で一山当てたらしくてそれで不動産買って<笑>今は不動産収入で悠々自適だとか<笑>最近はバドミントンやってるんですって。<laughs> Man made it big off of real estate. <laughs> I love how that's Will's fucking like epilogue story. It's like after stepping, after retiring as, you know, a, a witch hunter, he, he got really big in the real estate market and just, you know, retired a lavish like luxury. Also, you know, plays badminton with Leon. Like. <laughs> 
shit, man's living the life. <laughs> he likes it. Yeah, what's my little homie up to? Tell me. <laughs> oh god damn it, I fucking love the land art. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Oh wow. That was great. ああ、<笑> With this particular journey over and done with, the Voyager witches rested their wings. It was all so that they could leave on a new journey in search of the next fragment. A short break between trips, backdrop by the pleasant scent of black tea. あんたが期待行くなら私はペルンが東へ行くならまたこんな愉快な物語を見つけられるといい今度はペルンが憎まれ役じゃないと言うわねあら悪役も楽しかったわよ次はどんな物語を見つけられるかしらね愛し合う二
however, hadn't received such praise from the beginning. For the first six volumes, it went almost entirely unnoticed. But last year, when foreign translations of the series began, it got its big break until it became a huge topic of conversation. Oh yeah? Wait. Was that all just a fucking metaphor for this? <laughs> it's eight installments long. <laughs> until, like, I, I don't know the story of Umineko's reception. <laughs> but, what, did it, was it, like, not until, like, episode seven when things started getting translated overseas and suddenly everyone was like, oh, wait, what's this story? <laughs> Even before the series, the author had created quite a lot of works. Oh, yeah, ha have they? But none of those achieved any public acclaim. Okay, then that's definitely not in relation to this story, because I'm pretty sure Higarashi was insanely popular. Well, I know it's definitely insanely popular nowadays, but I'm sure it was popular before Umineko came around. However, after the sudden rise in notoriety, her previous works were being reevaluated one after another. I can believe that. In that sense, it's probably fair to call her an author who went unrecognized for quite a long time. Kotobuki sensei! Publishing company executives repeatedly showered her with praise. Do we get a sprite of Miss Kotobuki? Sakutaro's Great Adventure. The author's name was Kotobuki Yukari. Nearly all of her royalties were sent to fund to support need sent to a fund to support needy children. And she herself had served as the director at several pr protective institutions. Some envious people tried to call this fake charity, but the more that people learned about her, the more those voices withered and died away. Kotobuki Yukari. By now, that name rang loud and clear across Japan. She sat in a chair, cheerfully chatting with the people who came to greet her. Last year, she was diagnosed with the initial stages of cancer, and after the surgery, her physical strength dropped sharply. Oh. Because of this, even in this stand-up awards party, she was given a chair and sat down while greeting people. Some people lamented, saying that if she had only been 20, even 10 years younger, she might have left her mark in history as one of the greatest authors in the 21st century. It had taken so long for her to receive the praise she deserved. She could no longer be called young. Even so, her determination to write had not wavered in the slightest. The story had gone around that, even during her stay in the hospital, most of her time had been spent typing away. She always said the same thing, that she hadn't finished telling everything she needed to tell. Did she mean that she hadn't fully completed Sakutaro's great adventure? When that question was asked by a journalist, this is how she answered. If, by writing even one more book, I could teach just one more child about how to find happiness, then I'll spend the rest of my life writing every book, every page that I can. Because I still haven't fully conveyed the precious teachings I was given. Oh, the movie adaptation? Oh, Harry Potter, okay. It wasn't until I like said it in my head that I'm like, I, I looked at it and just looking at it, I didn't get it, but then I'm like, yeah, Harry Potter, yeah, okay. Harry the Potato, yes. Yes, that's what they mean by Harry Potter, yep, mm hmm. Because obviously they could actually reference the actual thing, but yeah, okay. I see what he's saying. It was the name of a fantasy series that become a worldwide hit. Yeah, the, is it about a potato that goes to wizarding school? ありがとうございます。ミニアマル光栄です。ああ、申し遅れました。私、まるまる出版第一編集局長のまるまると。これはどうもご丁寧に。いつかご一緒に仕事ができるといいですね。Yes. I was I was hoping for the reunion. I was hoping for the reunion. She remembered that name from several decades ago. She hadn't expected to ever hear it again. おや、それは
我々の方ですもちろんもちろんこれは仕事の話ではございませんので She used my name to figure out my identity. I figured her name relates to her somehow, but obviously I don't know Japanese like that, so.、Uh... The Rokenjima mystery has been called one of the greatest social phenomena of the at the turn of the century. That uproar, which dragged in enthusiasts from across the world, suddenly subsided after an event held by Hachijo Toya, where she was going to unveil the diary of u s h i r o m i y a Eva, which contained the truth. Though she had set up the event herself, she then outrageously disappeared without releasing the contents of the diary, drawing harsh criticism for doing so. However, a very, very obvious feeling had been revived in the public sphere that they had been prying into a terrible accident with many victims purely out of curiosity. And so the frenzy surrounding the Rokenjima mystery had faded away quietly. Hachijo Toya. No, Itoi Kukuro. She caught the public eye as a forger of Rokenjima mysteries. She claimed to have reached the truth and released groundbreaking works of fiction one after another. She became famous as the driving force behind the Rokenjima mystery. After realizing that Itoi Kukuro was Hachijo Toya, I went to a publishing company to ask for an interview, but I didn't get one. At the time, I despised her. Back in the beginning, I thought she might have used the Rokenjima mystery as a publicity stunt to advance herself. Now I feel a bit grateful to her. If she hadn't refused to show the diary in such an outrageous way, The Rokenjima cat box may still be the plaything of countless goats. She was indeed a forger who had toyed with the cat box, and I still had an uneasy feeling about her. However, at the same time, she was the one who, practically speaking, allowed Rokenjima to rest in peace. And did she really reach the truth? How had she reached something that seemed infinitely close to the truth, even from my perspective? Even now, after all these years, that's something I've wanted to know. いかがでしょうかこともちろん急なお話では八条先生もお時間がいただけるなわかりました先方は都心に近い方いつでも参上できると申しておりますわかりましたでは来週の日曜日に静かな喫茶店でおはいわかりましたありがとうございます八条先生もお喜びになると思います条件がありますはいなんなりお仕事の話ではありませんので編集の方はご遠慮ください無論でございます私と八条先生のそのようにお願いできああそのここだけのない何ですか実はですね八条東也先生は対外的には女性の先生がお一人で実際はもう一人男性の先生がおりまして、yeah. Yeah, そのお二人でお会いしたいと申しておりまして、mm -hmm. As soon as I heard that, I felt a premonition. Yeah. How had Hachijo Toya, a person who had no connection to the u s h i r o m i a family, managed to write about it in such detail? Oh, I wonder. I was already feeling a premonition of a certain kind of miracle. When I left on my journey, I abandoned the name of u s h i r o m i a Anji and stepped into a new life. By now, things have settled down, but when the Sumadera family was still a threat, I wanted to distance myself from that name. Thanks to that, no one was able to get in touch with the new me anymore. However, now that Sakutaro's adventure has caught the public eye this year, he made the name of Kotobuki Yukari famous. Maybe it finally reached his ears. I used to play with a lion's stuffed animal called Sakutaro, along with Mareya Onechan. If those who knew, this connected, who knew this connected the name Sakutaro with my name, then it's only natural that they'd figure out who I was. The number of people who would be able to recognize me from that was very, very small. This person was also well versed in detective novels, and a man. You could only think of one person who matched. After all, I knew just how many detective novels he had piled up in his room from the time when his effects were gone through. It was almost the time we had arranged for our meeting. My heart was racing, almost like a girl in love for the first time. At the very instant that the arranged time came, I heard the sound of the chime on the door, and they appeared. Yep. It was a man sitting in a wheelchair, and a woman pushing him. My eyes immediately fixed on the man in the wheelchair, and right away, I saw the traces that remained on his face. There's no doubt about it. He's my brother. My brother. 
Or should owe me a battler. Okay, okay. Honestly, I was wondering, because, like, so here's the thing that spoiled it for me. Um, in the Steam Point Shop, you know, with, with the Steam Points thing, you can buy, like, backgrounds for your Steam profile and whatever. And obviously there's ones pertaining to certain games, and one of the ones available for Umineko Answer Arcs is this background with Hachijo and, uh, the actual Toya. <laughs> But I was wondering why he looked so goddamn old. Why his hair was white, essentially. Like, I don't think getting in some kind of accident makes your hair white, but what do I know? But now I get it. It's because this is, like the game said, decades later. That makes sense. Gotcha. When our eyes met, he gave a little bow. I hurried to my feet and bowed back. It was a somewhat exaggerated and silly way for a pair of siblings to greet each other after several decades apart. However... My mind was already blank. The miracle I had waited for all this time was now a reality. Though the woman who called herself Ikuko was far older than me, Seemed to be unbelievably youthful. Yeah, it is surprising that she looks just about the same age, even though they said decades had passed. It wasn't because she was good with makeup or dressed like a younger woman. It feels strange to say it. There was a strange mystique about her, as though she was immortal and never aging. And I quickly remembered that she had introduced my brother as Toya. <laughs> Yeah, decades. <laughs> My brother smiled as he spoke. When I learned that, at least for him, those long decades hadn't been a period of isolation and loneliness. I felt an incredible sense of peace and relief. Before I knew it, he was staring back into my face. Well, I was just six years old the last time we met. It must be hard for him to find any traces he can recognize. However, I'm sure I'll recognize something just the same. We kept stealing glances at each other and looking away like a couple on a blind date. We were both at an age where our outside appearances mattered to us. Even though we both knew, we wouldn't let our polite exterior falter. This humorous exchange was extremely embarrassing. I thought it would be a faded reunion that we would hold each other and sob tears of gratitude together. However, reality seemed to be different. That's fine. It feels like my heart will explode with happiness. Yeah. <laughs> How stiff we're all being. Even my brother seemed to be finding it amusing by now. When she said that, my brother and I fell silent and sat straight. As he spoke, he watched me calmly. I gave the exaggerated bow that I'd gotten so used to these long years. We've both aged, haven't we, Ani-chan? I whispered this in my heart. Now it was my turn. With a quick apology, I fished around in my handbag and took out a photo. It was a picture from a trip I'd taken to an amusement park with Badler Ani-chan. I had many other pictures of us having a good time, but this one had the best shot of his face. I looked between him and the photo. There was no longer any room for doubt. I don't know. <laughs> the hands of the clock inside of me stopped. I wanted him to answer with a yes. Even though I was already so sure, I was still about to burst with the tension. And then when that instant that seemed far too long ended, my brother answered. So this. <laughs> Unconsciously, I stared at my brother's face. With unbelievable quickness, he acknowledged that he was Usharomi a battler. My eyes immediately filled and overflowed with tears. I took out a handkerchief and wiped them away, but I couldn't hold them back. Onichan was alive, after all. So, why didn't he come back to me right away? 
If he had been there during my darkest days, it would have meant so much to me. Normally, the thought would have made me curse my brother, but by now, even that emotion was softened. After all, now that I was faced with the miracle of being reunited with Onichan, everything I'd felt before fell away with my tears. At this moment, I was happy. I was never alone. I worked so hard for decades with that belief in my heart, and now I've finally been rewarded. By now, I couldn't even stop my tears. For some time, I continued to sob and sniffle. Watching this, my brother hung his head apologetically. Why didn't he come back to me sooner? It looked as though he was feeling regret for that. But I'm sure he had some sort of reason. He's probably here today to tell me about it and apologize. Already, just by him introducing himself to me today, everything inside of me has been washed clean with tears. I held up my hand weakly. My brother slowly held his out too. Then, I gripped his hand. Regardless of how many long years had passed, it was, without a doubt, my brother's hand. Once more, I had to struggle to hold back the tears. ネバオバさんはクアドリアンに逃れ、お兄さん。兄さんはどうやってあの事故を免れたのか。私はあの日、地下道に逃れました。それはクアドリアンに続く地下市。私たちはクアドリアンではなく潜水艦基地の方へ
神様のおぼしめしだと思います当時あなたは出版社を経由して私伊藤育九郎の正体に気づいたファンが面会を持って押しかけてくるファンもたくさんいらっしゃったでしょういちいちお会いにはなれなかったでしょういいえあなたの名前が後ろ宮演者だと当時私はすでに当夜の本当の名は後ろ宮私が断ったんです、oh. My brother said that to me. 今なんと私があなたに会いたくないと断ったんです。Once more, my brother spoke clearly. I was completely confused. I could only sit there in shock and silence, waiting for the words that were sure to follow. Toya was a kyok shogai that t a s o r a r h i t o s t e w a t a s h a t w a k a t e t e k o t o a t a n d e s I cut through Ikiko's words and questioned him directly. What reason could my brother have for rejecting me? I couldn't think of anything. That unpleasant emotion brought up long forgotten feelings of anger inside me. My brother hung his head. You're out of luck. You're out of luck. You're out of luck. You're out of luck. It seemed more like he was lost for words than apologetic. There was nothing shy about his appearance, and I questioned him again in an even louder voice. When I asked for an appointment with Hachicho Toya, Itoi Kukuro was already famous as a forager. Why did Itoi Kukuro's forgeries reach the truth? It's obvious. My brother, Ushirame Battler, explained to her what happened on the island in detail. So the appearance of Itoi Kukuro proves that my brother's memory had returned. Therefore, he can't excuse himself by saying that he didn't remember me. In fact, in reality, he didn't even try to make excuses. On the contrary, he's openly said that he refused to meet me even though he knew who I was. <laughs> Various emotions swirled inside of me. I realized that I wasn't in control of them anymore. I could only moan to prevent myself from saying something I'd regret. もっと早くに出会ったらなぜあの時ことぶき先生先ほどもお話ししました事故の後遺症ですそれでも記憶は戻ったじゃありませんへえただそれでも後遺症は治りませんでした私は後ろ宮バトラの記憶を持ってですがそれが自分のことと思えない、うん、自分のことと思えないはい確かに私は島を出すしかしそれ以外のことは例えばあなたが大事にしていたピンクの髪飾りはわへえそうです私の子供の頃の宝物です今もこうしてハンドバッグの中に大事にしまっています他にもいろいろあなたがひじきが嫌いでお母さんを困らせていたことやそれを私のお皿に移してそこまで覚えていてどうして自分の記憶と思えないのですかそれがいくつもの病院を巡りましたがあなたにはわからないでしょうある日突然知らない男の記憶が頭いっぱいにあふれ出すのがどれほどつらいことか He was terrified that he wasn't himself anymore. His mind was filled with the memories of a man he didn't recognize, and they threatened to crush and overwhelm him. They must have been his own lost memories. However, his brain couldn't accept those as his own. のの彼も何度かはそれが自分の正しい記憶であると自分は後ろ宮バトラであると何度も念じ続けましたですが私は私八丈東也の頭の中に
どれほど後ろ宮バトラの記憶が溢れようともそれは私には他人の記憶なんです私には後ろ宮バトラを受け入れることは As Ushiromiya Battler said this, Hyunga's eyes and his eyes turned red. Now I know why he showed up in that wheelchair. And now I know why he refused to meet with me. He was afraid that I would call him Big Brother. He was terrified of meeting me, fearful that the part of himself that wasn't him would grow still further in his mind. それでも彼は戦った自分の中に後ろ宮バトラがいる以上あなたに会うのがその義務ではないか、mm -hmm. そう思い彼は何度も二人の自分の狭間で戦ったのです And then he had a fit After something like that it was only natural that Ikuko would tell him that he didn't need to remember Ushiromiya Battler anymore Bit by bit he tried to forget that he was once Ushiromiya Battler Doctor's instructions and medication With that, in Ikiko's diligent care, he slowly began to regain his peace of mind. As the one who was once Ushirami Battler said this, he broke down crying. I already understood. So, it really was true. Ushirami Battler did die that day. Mm -hmm. After all, didn't the witches say that he was dead so often with the red truth? How pathetic for the Witch of Resurrection, the Witch of the Future, swore that everyone would be together always. <laughs> they realized why I had called him Toya-san. By calling him by that name, I myself felt the agitation in my heart subside a little. <laughs> Holding hands, we brought our foreheads close and cried together for a while. Then we talked of the old days. He remembered many things vividly, and things that I couldn't remember myself. Each time they made me cry even harder, and he hung his head apologetically. I realized how much this hurt him, so I kept nodding in encouragement with a strange look on my face, something between a sob and a smile. Even if he isn't Ishirami a battler, my Onichan came back to me. Welcome home, Onichan. Fuck yeah. It may have not been the perfect reunion, but having them come together like that, that was. Mm hmm, that was nice. It had already gotten dark outside. Even though he had come from far away, he was willing to stay as late as this. We left the store. It's probably best if I don't meet with Mr. Toya again. It will cause him pain, and of course I'll find myself bound to the past again. Even so, just one more time, there was one place I felt I had to show him. From my handbag, I pulled an invitation written on a folded up piece of A4 paper. The pair of them spread it out. Oh yeah. これは素敵な催しですねそういえば先生は小説の他にもその日にもう一度だけお時間をくださいませんかそれで私も兄も
納得すると思いますどうや先生も兄の記憶の重責から解放されていいと思います予定は問題ないです文庫の後書きさえ終わらせておけばわかりました寿先生ぜひお伺いさせてもらいますありがとうどうや先生 Okay, okay. What you about? Let me know. What you about? Let me know. The cold October night was a reminder that winter was approaching. The two people who called themselves Hachijotoya visited the city once again by Angie's invitation. The car stopped in front of a large building. Ikiko unfolded the wheelchair with a practice hand. Lent a shoulder at Totoya as he got out of the passenger seat and helped him into the chair. They were welcomed by Angie and some of the staff members. This was the Fukuin House, a welfare institution for unfortunate children who had lost their parents. In the past, this institution had been established thanks to Ushirami Akinzo's support. However, that support had been interrupted and the Fukuin House had been forced to shut down for a time. Decades passed, and now the institution would be revived, revived by the hand of Kotobuki Yukari. Kotobuki Sensei, Kore. That's not the reason I invited you here. Thank you so much. 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 The Fukuin house has been drastically remodeled in recent years, in the hopes that children would one day be able to remember this as a fun place. Anja used her own money to massively remodel it into a beautiful establishment. By now, she had accumulated a lot of wealth as a novelist. Even without that, she had been saving the tens of millions of yen she got from the Ushiromi group each year under the name of living expenses. This money had been used generously to help the children. Hell yeah. When they came into the entrance hall, a cheerful scene was spread before them. There were pictures of cra pictures and crafts created by the children. Every corner was filled with things on display. The contrast between this elegant building and the school atmosphere was amusing. The yells and laughter of kids running around drifted in from the distance. ここは誰だって未来を生み出し幸せのかけらを見つける魔法がここはそういう魔法を教えるどうぞ Pushing Toya's wheelchair, we advanced through the corridor and reached the great doors at the end. The happy voices of children came from the other side. Apparently, this was where tonight's party was being held. There were several jack-o'-lanterns cut out of origami. Tonight was the Fukuin House's Halloween party. Happy Halloween! This <laughs> He was handed a bag filled with candy. Teacher warned him in a small voice to watch out for rampaging children. <sighs> nah, don't worry. I'll just run him over my hot whip. もう何年も触れ合っていません。どうか子供たちに夢を語ってあげてください。みんなお客様を歓迎しますよ。これは困った。何を語ってあげればいいやら。原稿の持ち込みはよく出版社を選びましょう。読者アンケートなんて気にし
ここ <laughs> At the side of the hall, Toy opened his mouth in wide-eyed shock. This was the great hall of the Ishiramiya mansion. No, that's impossible. This is definitely the Hukuin house. But it's hall. It's just like the one in the Rokenjima mansion. ステキなホールですね。これは六軒島の後ろ宮家のお屋敷のホールの。え、私の記憶の中にあるものを再現細部が間違っているかもしれませんが。いや、これは本当にあの日の後ろ宮家のお屋敷のホールです。And then Toya's eyes fixed on something at the other side of the room. Yep, it was a portrait. A portrait of Rokenjima's other master. That was simply frozen in shock. The long large table was filled with Halloween party food and surrounded with children stuffing themselves. The teacher said, everyone, we have guests. The children all looked at us at once, then stood up and ran forward. Their broad smiles at the arrival of this long-awaited guest enveloped me. The smiles and eyes of the children welcomed me. Yeah, I know. I know all your faces. It's been so long, far too long. I'm finally here, at last. お帰りなさいませ。遅いではないか。お待ちしておりました。お帰り、バトラ。お帰りなさい。元気そうだろ。バトラ君。お、元気そうやな。お帰りなさい。ウリュウ。ウリュウ。みんな待ってたわよ。
Hell yeah. That fucking kicked ass. <laughs> that was... Mmm. 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 <clears throat> I don't know if they're gonna have some kind of like post credit scene going on here, but I mean, you know, I guess we'll get to that if we do, but in the chance there isn't. Holy fuck. <laughs> I don't understand why, why the eighth episode gets trashed online. It doesn't get trashed, I guess. Like, like I said, it's kind of like a 50-50 thing. People talk shit about it, but also there's a lot of people that definitely give it praise. I think it's definitely worthy of praise. This was a phenomenal ending. A phenomenal way to wrap it all up. Holy hell. Oh, wow. I just don't have anything more to say. That was... That was great. That was... That was... Ugh. I could definitely understand why for so many people this is one of their favorite works. And honestly, it... it I... I think it definitely sits as one of my favorites too. You know, I saw a lot of people like, not people like in my comments or anything, it was more so in like, I think it was the reviews on Steam saying like, oh this is one of the best VNs, it tops whatever you've read, and obviously I've seen like, you know, weirdos on Twitter saying shit like that too. I don't think that's the type of, you know, attitude you should have going into a game like, expecting something to top your favorites. Because honestly, if I'm, if I'm being honest, yeah, like the Muv Love series, I would still put it above this. Honestly, Song of Memories, while I do think technically this would be a better story, I think Song of Memories is just something special for me that just... It, it's its just something special to me, so it's obviously just going to sit higher up because of my own personal experience with it. But I do think, like, Umineko as an entire story would probably sit in, like, my top... as, like, number three in my top five visual novels if you were to do that. Th this ending was fucking amazing. I truly enjoyed it. Especially this last recording session. This has probably been like so fucking, this was like the best bits of it. This was, this was great. This was amazing. So, to like, to the one person years ago who said I should give Umineko a chance, yo, Big ups to that person, because that's the whole reason it was on my wish list. That's the whole reason I gave it a shot. Because honestly, prior to that one person in my comments who said, "Oh, you should give Umineko a chance if you're trying to play like really big visual novels," like that's 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 one that people are gonna that people are gonna want to see. I have to this tale to my beloved witch Beatrice. Nice. 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 But yeah, shout out to that one person. Because this... This has been a phenomenal ride. It's honestly crazy to think that now it's actually all over. Like, the next thing I play... Won't be Umineko. This is like... Like, it's honestly like a similar feeling to what I had when I wrapped up... Uh, Muv Love Altered Fable. Because that was after what, 14 months, I think it was? Over a, over a whole entire year of playing through Muvlove Love series games, which it's almost been that way with this. Because, what, I started this in August, I want to say? Or was it late July? I think it was, like, early... Like, it was either late July, early August of 2021. And now here we are. I'm recording this at the end of July 2022. But there was also like three months in between there where I wasn't playing it. Something like three months, right? Cause, yeah. Because I did the episode four live stream on New Year's Day. And then I didn't start playing this till like March. So it was like a solid two, two and a half months, something like that, where I wasn't playing it. So not quite a full year, but still, this has been... It's definitely a long adventure. But goddamn, it is a good one. It is a fucking solid one. Oh my god. I, 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 don't, I don't have really any better words to describe it. It's just, it's a very unique experience. Like, obviously, I've played, I've played games, read stories, watched movies that are, like, mystery-based. 
but the way this game ha what handled a mystery and turned it like into a fantasy story that was about a mystery that was uh, that's insane which I'm s I'm guessing that's what Higurashi and Sikonia do as well I don't know haven't played either of them but I, I, I figure I'm guessing it's like a blend of mystery and fantasy and that's what makes it so good or maybe this one is unique in, in its own way I don't know but this this has been a wild story absolutely and it's definitely not one I'm going to forget about. This is this has been an incredible ride. And I think one thing that's really driven me in these and the answer arcs especially because going into this I didn't know that, you know, the story of the siblings would be so you know, would be such, would be such a big part of this. Um and that's the thing that's going to get me in any story. Whenever you're bringing siblings into it, because I personally, you know, yeah, obviously I have siblings, and my siblings mean a lot to me. And especially this story got me hard. I, I should rephrase that. <laughs> this story really hit me heavy because, you know, I have a baby sister that's fucking 12 years younger than I am. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Which is the fucking age difference between Badler and Angie. That's insane, actually. I never actually thought about that until now. But that's, that's a big reason why a lot of these moments have hit me so hard. That have, like, really gotten to me. Stories like that that involve sibling... That involve, like, sibling shit like that. Just... Mm. I, I'm, I'm just talking about it now and I'm getting choked up thinking about it. Like, yeah. These kind of stories, like, they're the ones that really hit hard for me. I, that's the that's, thing. I like these visual novels that really... They give you a strong story about siblings, and then it doesn't get weird. I, yo, you don't get that from a lot of visual novels these days. <laughs> like I, I mentioned earlier, one of my favorites, Song of Memories. Yo, there's there's some good moments that really focus on that sibling relationship in that story. But then, of course, one of the routes is the sibling, <laughs> and of course, probably like my least favorite route in the story. But that aside, this isn't about Song of Memories. This is about Umineko, and Umineko. Let me just say one last time so I don't keep rambling on. This is a phenomenal fucking story. Phenomenal. Like, I think episode 3 is probably the only episode that I just really didn't like that much. I think other than that, every every episode has been has had something to it that I've loved. And it's just... It's been such a great ride. It really has. And it just it feels weird to finally step away from it. Like, after this, I'm done with it, you know? Um, I mean, I've actually picked up Golden Fantasia on Steam, the fighting game, and I've played a bit of that, and I've been enjoying it a lot. And so, I mean, there will be more Umineko in my future, for sure. Because there's like, what, fucking 20 different unique endings or something in that game? <laughs> something like that. But yeah, this, this is, this has been a wild time. So one last time, let me say thank you to everyone who's been watching this playthrough everyone who stuck with it I know a lot of people were turned off from the very beginning because I'm such an insane person for sticking with the steam sprites but fuck you I like them but to everyone but like I said to everyone who has stuck with it thank you once again thank you to the person that recommended it it's been a phenomenal experience and yeah once again thank you for watching Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I see y'all in whatever it is I play next. But until then, peace.